me tell you a story. When I first started on TPT, I kind of got there by accident. I was doing a blog and I wanted to have a way to have more like downloads and things for my blog. And then I was like, if I'm going to do all that work, I should probably get paid for some of it. And so I decided to start on TPT. And so I did a little bit of research as much as I could find because at the time there was like nothing. And I got yeah, I spent hours and hours finding digital paper and figuring out how to make everything and I got my first product all ready to go and I was so excited and I go to list it and it said your first product has to be free. And I was like, I just spent so many hours on this. It is so then I had to make a new product to make it free. But since then, I have learned a lot of stuff about free products. And so we're going to talk all about free products here in this video today. So if you're on Teachers Pay Teachers, you might notice that there are a lot of things for free and you might have a lot of questions. I know because people ask me questions about what should be free and how much should you give away and just all of these different things. So we're going to talk about all those things today in this video. Um, the first thing you should know is that your first resource on TPT does need to be free. So before you make anything, do be aware of that you can change it later by the way but just be aware that you do need to have something free before you can have something paid and with that I have a whole long list of things we're going to talk about so let's get started so the first thing is why are we making free products um well first of all because tpt asks you to so you should make some free products but beyond that um free products are actually really helpful because they give teachers the chance to try out your resources and kind of test your brand before they commit to purchasing anything so having free resources means that teachers can try things they can use things and hopefully fall in love with your products before they ever purchase which means they're gonna want to purchase a lot more it also provides teachers with that quick win and it gives something away and just kind of contributes to that spirit of generosity because we all know that teachers don't get paid much. That's probably why most of us started on TPT because we don't get paid enough. And so we want to make sure that we have some resources that are available for teachers to use for free. But in general, yes, free products are great because they do allow people to get to know you, get to know your brand and just get a quick win. And when they can get a quick win, then they are much more likely to listen to other things that you have to say and other products that you have to sell. Hey guys, slight change of outfit. I just want to pop on here because I realized that I forgot one of the most important questions and that is how much of your TPT shop should be free. So when you're looking at your Teachers Pay Teachers store, you do want to have free resources, but you don't want them to like overtake your store because if you have too many, then people aren't going to want to buy your stuff and it's just like a whole big thing. So my suggestion, and I talked to a couple other TPT sellers who have been doing it longer than I have just to make sure I was like in the right ballpark before I told you anything, to have about five to 10% of your store being free resources and I would go even further and say when you get started you might want to have closer to 10 percent and then when you have been around a while then you can bump that down a little bit more the reason being when you're getting started you don't have as big of an audience people haven't used as many of your things and so if you have a couple more free resources that gives a couple more chances for people to find you versus when you're bigger and you have 400 products you know I have I literally like I have like 440 products and so if I have like you know it's like almost 50 free products like that's a lot so I went and ran the numbers on my shop and I have about five I have about five or six percent of free resources now on top of that I also have some other free things like I have a blog and I have YouTube and I have a free resource library with stuff that is not in my free resources on TBT so all of those things I feel like kind of factor in and make it just a little bit like more okay to be on the lower side um, you can kind of decide where you want to fall in that it might depend on what sort of things you're having as freebies so in my Becca's Bible class um, I'm kind of restructuring how I do my budget and I'm gonna have more free resources that are gonna be a little bit smaller and so I have a couple of like full-size good free resources but I'm also gonna have a lot of um, smaller free ones because I just want people to have these things for each of the lessons and I don't feel like they're really worth paying very much and so I honestly I was like well I can make it like a dollar but that's kind of silly. I can just make it free. So um, between 5 and 10% is where you should shoot. I would say if you are newer, shoot for closer to 10 because that's, you know, if you have 10 products, that's one free product. If you have 50 products, that's five free products. If you have 100, that's 10. Um, 
and then once you get kind of over 100 then you can bump it down a little bit but again it's your shop it's your choice so you get to decide what you want to do but i would say that's kind of in the magic spot is that five to ten percent of resources being free so what should be free now this is a very subjective because i mean you can't make anything free so there's lots of different options um the first thing that you need to think about is a quick win this is the very best thing that you can make free if you have a product that can solve a teacher's problem quickly that they can implement it can be great that is a wonderful thing to have as a freebie because when someone gets a quick win they are so much more likely to come back and check you out again i hear people on this youtube channel who have maybe like watched my description video or oh i've been preaching product photography lately and i keep getting messages people are like i started doing product photography and it changed my life and i'm like oh, i know isn't it amazing and now they're much more likely to trust me because they tried something i suggested and it worked so a quick win is always gonna be your best bet that can be hard to you know orchestrate so there are some other things Another thing you might want to do as far as your free product is to have one product out of a product line. So if you have a particular game that's available or a particular, you know, whatever your product lines are, see if you can make one of them free. So maybe you have like writing activities for the whole year. And so you have maybe like 12 and it's like a monthly thing. See if you can have one for free or have like a bonus one that's free and just have those available so that you get like a little bit extra as well as the rest of it. This is really, really beneficial because not only are people now getting the quick win, they get something for free, but they also are getting to try out your product line. And if they like it, they'll come back for more. You can have maybe a page in your products that's like, hey, this is a part of a product line. If you like this, you can go check those out. So it's promoting your product line. And also if you have a bundle, the free products will show up in the bundle. So it'll be like, you know, this is included in this bundle. And so then people can see the bundle and then they might potentially purchase the bundle while getting the free resource now that's of course speculation but those are all good strategies but those are all good reasons to have one of your products out of a product line to be free anytime i have a big product line i try to make one of them free so that people can kind of try it out test it out see if they like it and then hopefully come back for more another idea for free products would be maybe helping teachers with the how of something so maybe you have a video that is like a free pd video on tpt because you can if you're a premium seller you can upload like pd videos on tpt and you can explain like how to do something or you can do you know a digital or a printable resource that's helping with something so maybe you say like here's a huge list of centers activities or here is I don't know um quick ways to get your kids engaged or ideas for callbacks you know when you like say something and the kids say something back or how to make anchor charts or you know things like that where you can kind of help teachers with the how or the why behind some of your products and that's also really helpful and something you probably wouldn't want to pay for so having either videos or like a printable thing where or like maybe a printable checklist things like that would be great as freebies now one question i get a lot is if i'm doing freebies for my email or on my blog or especially if i have a free resource library should those be the same freebies as in my tpt shop or do they need to be different mostly they should be different because if you have an especially a free resource library if you have a free resource library and everything that's available there is available on your tpt shop there's no reason to sign up for your free resource library or to sign up for the emails to get these things if you can get them without having to sign up or get your emails in TPT. So you wanna make sure that if you have a free resource library, you do have some things that are just available in there, but I will say it's okay to have some things that do cross over. I have a couple of products that are in both, usually things that are like, I just need people to get this content, like, um, we did music choice boards when we first when all the schools shut down and I was like I just want as many people as possible to get this so I put it in both places when I promote it I only promote it talking about my email list I don't mention that it's on TPT but people can find it on TPT which brings me to the next point um if people are finding something more via search that would be a good thing to do on TPT versus if something's maybe a little more obscure then you could do it on your website where you're talking about it in blogs and you're talking about it in different places but it's not necessarily um, something someone would search for if that makes sense so like I teach elementary music and so some songs are very common and people search for them and so people are more likely to search 
for those common songs that they know, which means they would find them, than obscure songs. If I use obscure songs and nobody knows what they are, they're not gonna search for them, they're not gonna find the free resources, so it's better in my free resource library. But if it's something they're searching for, then it might be good to put it on TBT because they might find me through the search. So if someone can find you through the search, that would be a good instance to put it in your TBT shop versus your email list. So think about the consumer and think about where they're finding your information. Are they finding it through search or are they finding it just because you're talking about it on Instagram or on your blog or on YouTube or whatever? If it's from your talking, it needs to, it should be in your email list. If it's from search, then you can put it on TPT. But the end of the story is most of your freebies over here in your free research library should be exclusive because otherwise there's no point in having both and that's one reason why my percentage of how many free products i have on tpt is lower because i have a lot of free resources in my free resource library and again i have tons of videos and tons of blog posts so i feel like it kind of even though but that being said i am going to see if i can add a few more like search friendly things over on tpt and when it comes down to it, honestly, it's up to you. So whichever one you pick is really just going to be up to you and your decision making. Also remember that when people join your email list, you can tag them. So if you are maybe trying to promote a particular product line or bundle, it might be a good idea to put them in your email list because then you can tag them and you can send them an email to say like, hey, you might, if you, you know, got that free resource, you might like these other similar ones you might like this bundle things like that but again when it comes down to it it's it's just up to you all right now a couple of quick do's and don'ts for your freebies on tbt number one is don't make it too long your free resource should not be a 100 page ebook it should be a quick win because i mean just think of it if you give like a month-long curriculum by the time the end of the month comes, the teacher's probably forgotten where they got that from or what it is. So you might, instead of a month long curriculum, you might wanna do it just like one week that's free or one day that's free. So people can try it, they can test it out, they can use it, and then if they like it, they can come back and buy more. But you want it to be quick. I have, no joke, I have like three eBooks that I downloaded free that were all like music teacher related. And I downloaded them, I printed them all out, and they're still sitting in my closet because they were so big and so overwhelming that I never looked at them. If I had paid for those, you better bet that I would have looked through them. So my point being, if they had given me one or two of those lessons out of there, I probably would have already used them. But because it was so long and so much information, I have never looked at them. So don't make it too long that it's overwhelming or that people will forget to use them or forget where they got them or anything like that. Or they just don't feel like they need it. If it's so much information, they don't feel like they need to come back and purchase resources then that's not helping you yeah it helps the teacher but you, you want it you want it to be reciprocal so it's, it's a win-win situation on tbt if it's not a win-win it's just one win then we don't want that do however make it super useful you don't want things that are you know not useful or fluffy or that no one's going to ever use because again if no one uses it, they don't like it, then it's not going to help them want to buy things from your store. That's not going to give them a good impression of you. So make sure it's useful and that it's good. You don't want it to be like crummy resources that are free. You want them to be decent resources that are up to your normal quality standards so that people know what to expect. Which goes with my next one is don't make it subpar quality. So it's not this is free because it's not worth money. It's this is free because I'm being generous and I'm giving this to you. Or this is free because I want you to taste it and then hopefully come back for more. But it's not this is free because it stinks. We don't want that. That's not that's not fun. Um, but we want it to be good quality that solves a problem that teachers want to use so that they will want to come back for more. Do add it to your bundles because again, if you add it to bundles, it'll pop up in that little thing. It'll say this is in these bundles and then people will see your bundle, know that you have a bundle and hopefully maybe even purchase your bundle if they are enticed to do so. So make sure that you are including them in your bundles so that people will be interested in purchasing said bundles. 
or you can always in your description tag relevant other activities um, or even in your product you can have a page where you're like hey if you like this you might also like these products too and so those are different ways that you can cross sell or upsell your products cross sell means you're like selling something on the same level so like here's another product that's similar upsell would be like you paid three dollars here's like a twenty dollar bundle things like that so you can promote other resources in that now not like a ton but you know one or two on one page that they can delete before they give the kids it's fine just don't make it like obnoxious and the last one is don't stress too much about it there's no freebie police that's gonna come and say oh this is too much free or not enough free or any of those things so don't stress too much about it make it free or don't make it free just make a decision and keep going and remember you can always change things later you can always add new freebies you can you know take things off you can put things in your free resource library you can do whatever you want so don't stress too much about it just make sure that you always come from a place of giving and that you are trying your best to be generous let me know down below in the comments if you have any more freebie questions and I will see if I can address them at a later point and I would love to know some of your freebies so like what's your primary free resource or if you don't like that one what's just a free resource that you have available let me know in the comments and I will see you guys next time bye